DIY out of tech. Um, what we got here today is a Cat 11 converter, a high flow cat with a flex pipe and down pipe here. Now the reason we have this here on the bench today is because we're going to be installing this into this uh, 1998 Saturn SL2. Um, common reasons why you would want to replace your cat is uh, because for emissions, obviously sometimes cars don't pass emissions and most people think that the first step is to go to replace the cat. Um, the reason we're doing this vehicle is because the actual particles within the catalytic converter have uh, disintegrated and now they're bouncing around and causing a noise issue. So that was the uh, customer complaint. Now what we went ahead and did was bought this high flow cat, which is going to allow air to uh, flow through here a little bit easier. It's going to improve gas mileage a bit and give us a little more power. Um, not very much and uh, it'll work perfectly. Uh, you could go with the catless style, however you're never going to pass smog and you're probably going to have to get your car tuned because your vehicle computer will not be able to compensate for the, uh, the amount of airflow that has been increased and your vehicle will, will basically run lean and blow itself up. So we want with this high flow, our computer will be able to compensate for this and again it will give us a little more power and uh, a little better gas mileage. Um, common issues you'll find with uh, clogged catalytic converters, um, usually overheating, loss of power, bad gas mileage. Um, the smell of rotten eggs possibly under higher loads. Um, so those are those are some of the common things that will be wrong. But uh, we'll show you how to replace this today. As long as you guys, you'll need your downpipe gasket, pretty universal. You'll need the same gasket for the rear. Some uh, bolt penetrant because usually the bolts are on the bottom of the car and will be rusted on. And in some applications you may need to uh, have a hacksaw of some sort because some are some are uh, welded together and then when you're replacing this it also be a good idea to uh, replace your oxygen sensors um, if you have single wire or double wire um, I know some vehicles have up to six oxygen sensors so it just depends it's all up to you this vehicle only has two it has a pre-cat and after cat so we're gonna go ahead and replace both I'll show you how to do that today Alright, so as you can see here, we're underneath the vehicle and we need to unbolt the bolts on this flange here to the back of the exhaust pipe, which we've already done. Alright, once that's all unbolted, you can see this our flex pipe here. We need to unbolt it from the bottom of it via trans mount here. And then up, up here and up top where the, where the flange actually meets the header. Forgot to mention we need to disconnect the ocean sensor. We got our new one, but that's the old one there. As you can see, this thing is shot. Rusted over. A bend in the pipe there. So it's a good idea that we got a fresh new one here. Our next step here is to part match to make sure that everything lines up the same before we try and bolt it back up onto the car. So as you can see here, they're both the same size. It's gonna bolt up perfectly.
All right, well, we used our grinding pad here and a pair of safety goggles. And we're just ensuring that this mating surface is nice and smooth. So when we put the new gaskets on, we don't have any exhaust leaks whatsoever. Now that we got this off, we need to get this clamp off as well. What I went ahead and did is spray that nut with a PB blaster since it's so corroded and rusty. And then we'll try and get off with an air impact wrench to see if it'll come off without breaking the bolt. Let it sit for about 10 minutes and kind of soak in because we need to apply that to the new one right there. Now let's see if this works without snapping. That would be mighty nice. Break the bolts off. Now we just need to punch this out. We should be good to roll. All right, now just to show you that not everyone's perfect, um, you know, these are just some of the problems you're going to encounter. Because the bolt was so rusty, we had to use one size larger to go over it, and it actually spun inside there, as you can see. Now that's stuck in there pretty good, and it's a rusty bolt. So the main trick you want to do here is just to use a little bit of a bolt kind of shrink. Stick this in the vise just a tad. Find a good size punch. There we go. Stick that in the vise, find a good size punch so we can punch this bolt out. Just like that. You want to hit pretty hard too. As you can see we spun it out. See where it got locked in right there? So we're going to try and find another nut because this one's pretty busted but you know just some of the stuff some of the problems you might run into. You know, not all jobs go perfect, so I like to show you guys how to kind of fix things up so they still work afterwards. All right, you can go ahead and uh, try and pull that off. First thing I'm gonna wanna do here is kind of just whack it around a little bit with my mallet, like so, just to kind of get it moving around. Now we should be able to separate it. All right, so I've gotten it separated quite a bit here by just usage of prying sort. Everyone's gonna have their own method at this. Since this is so rusty, it's just not going to unbolt. So this method's working for me. Should be able to pry it a little bit more. Just like that. So we went ahead and got it off there. Now we'll be able to get at this flange. As we can see, someone had uh, attempted to grind or weld this on, so we're going to go ahead and clean this. Now we'll move it over to the finishing.
Now we have something smooth. So now we have it all set up so we can go ahead and start popping this on the car. Once we get these bolts in, we can go ahead and tighten up the bottom end of it as well. So we can go ahead and start putting this on the car. Alright, so what we've gone ahead and done is uh, we've lifted our new one back into place put our rubber mounts back on to hold it up, okay? And then we uh, fasten our bolts in back here. We fasten them up. Uh, we didn't torque them all the way. We wanna get all the bolts in there first. And then uh, we got our little piece here. Y'all can see that. This piece that we pried off the other one, We've got that locked in there, and it's bolted onto the bottom subframe. We're going to torque that up as well, and then we're going to tighten the bolts up here on the top uh, header flange too. So we want to leave everything a little loose, okay, just so we have room to play. look good. Now here we had also tightened. All three of those flange bolts. It's all buttoned back up. Got the O2 sensor button back into the new motion sensor. It's all set up. 